last time on Adventures in Trucking with Indiana Jack. Whenever I come to Detroit, I see that basketball and it reminds me of when I was a kid. I, I actually played basketball in fourth, fifth, and sixth grade. It's a good memory. I mean, I wasn't a star basketball player, but that's my extent of memories of basketball. All right, we made it in the dock. And hopefully they'll get us unloaded right away. We have one more drop of these same things. Well, the brokers gave us the wrong address on this. Customer said they uh, moved a year ago. So we're going a few streets away. Hopefully, this new place will be it. You guys look for 8300. Yeah, it's right up here. Well, we found the right place. But uh, we have to wait till this guy's unloaded. No, he's getting loaded and then we'll be next. He says the best thing for me to do is to uh, pull across the street and then back straight across and that's a good idea so I don't have to turn around. So we'll just turn in there and then back right in there. Well, we got unloaded. We're in Lapeer, Michigan now, which is about an hour north of Detroit, where we were this morning. But they're not ready for us here, so we're going to open the doors and just kick back for until they tell us it's ready. Beautiful up here in Michigan. If you're a guy in a straight truck or a little flatbed like that, don't park there when you know semis have to get into a dock. We can do it, but it just makes it twice as hard when you park in the only room that we have. So that's a uh, public service announcement from Indiana Jack. Well, he finally told me I could back in, but they're not ready. The things are still being painted. So he said it would be a few more hours. So I said, well, I've already been here a few hours. So I'm going to disconnect from the mothership and go up to Starbucks and then come back because I have absolutely nothing else to do here. This is going to be a little challenging with that flatbed parked there. But we'll make it. At least he's letting me park uh, back up to a door. That's some movement.
I haven't seen a praying mantis since I was a kid and played with Brian Arndt in California and he was into bugs and all that stuff and he'd always have praying mantises and all these kind of other bugs that I didn't know what they were. We are going 15 miles an hour here on 23 and I only have five more miles to go and it's just miserable. And it's construction so it's necessary but it just kind of put a, a damper on my my day leaving Michigan heading to Mississippi okay we made it to the truck stop safely we actually had a pretty good day here in Michigan but not as good as uh, getting any miles so if you consider miles it wasn't very good but just Surviving in one piece. There you go. So we're only five miles from the border of Ohio. So when we wake up, I might let you guys sleep. And we'll be in Ohio by the time you wake up. Good night. I'm Indiana Jack. Thanks for watching. the cops come. No truck parking here. But there is Frappuccinos. All right. We're here uh, where they make defense and army equipment, which is kind of cool. Howdy. What was that? I didn't need it for Okay, thank you. We're in West Bank, Mississippi, looking for a load. And uh, just trying to get out of here. I think I might try to start doing some shorter loads, not the longer ones. We'll see. There's quite a few loads on the load board, so I'm going to keep looking and try to find one out of here. Lots of stuff on the board, so we'll get something good. West Point, Mississippi. I found a load, pretty good one, from Baldwin, Mississippi, if you're following along on the map, going down to Houston. So I'm going down to pick it up, or going up to pick it up. And that'll be a nice 650-mile uh, trip for us to do today. And a little bit tomorrow. Half and half. Half today, half tomorrow. Something like that. Alright, these streets are so tiny, they want me to turn right here, no way. Jeez, I can't turn right on this street. I'm going to try, but... I don't know how I'm going to do it. See here we were facing south 
and they uh, I needed to turn right here but you had to swing way out and if there were cars parked right there or you know waiting right there you'd knock all those cars out so that's a sharp turn that's why I was so concerned but eventually we made it down Dixie there was no other street going to where we're going. So, at least there's a cement truck and a little truck, 48 footer turning on this. So that means we're a little bit in the right. We're in Houston, everybody, by the way. See, all these cars would have been wiped out here on this side of the street. Yesterday, we picked up mattresses, or foam, actually, in Mississippi. And they will probably be made into mattresses, but I don't know that. This section where we're going, it, it's like track homes, but they're businesses. Very small, so I don't know if they're going to unload me in the street or what. Please tell me I don't have to back up in there. I would be happy just seeing a sign or something. All right, I think I see the place. Something tells me I have to back in there. And the first thing I look at is that truck as the obstruction. But let's not be all negative yet. Let's see if this is the place. All right, well, I have good news. Bad news and good news. One, they're at lunch, of course. And two, they're going to take me to some other warehouse down the street. And hopefully it'll be better than this place. All right, we got turned around. You don't want to know how I did it. It wasn't easy, but we got turned around and we're facing to go that way. We're waiting for a mighty Facebook, ah, Facebook, a mighty forklift driver to come get us and show us the way. All right. There's our forklift, man. When I first got here, my tank was at 25% fuel. And then I came here, and because my truck was leaning the opposite way, it was all siphoning to the other side, and I would have run out of fuel. So I had to explain to them that I needed to turn turn my truck around so it was leaning the opposite way and then I wouldn't run out of fuel. Well they didn't understand that at all so after lots of pointing and nodding and then I still don't think they understood but I turned my truck around and now 
I have plenty of fuel, but that's a common occurrence with semis that if you're leaning in one direction, you'll eventually run out of fuel. See, we're at uh, 22 gallons now. When I was parked the other directions, it, was, it went down to three gallons. But now that I've leaned the truck back that way, the uh, fuel gauge is uh, running correctly. I don't even know if I would have run out of fuel, but I didn't want to keep worrying about it while they were unloading me. All right, that's a good sign. We are now empty. We just need to get the door shut, have him sign the paperwork, and we'll be out of here. And we have a pickup not too far from here, and I just called and they won't let us get it early, unfortunately. So we'll get it tomorrow, and uh, we'll be bright and early for it tomorrow. somebody on this bridge that will only go 49. It's 55. You can get away with 60. Uh. We are in Gulfport, Mississippi. We did 456 miles today only. Tomorrow we only have 600 to do. So this is as good a place as any. I was gonna drive and uh, stop at Moe's and stop there, and that's only 50 more miles, but I do prefer Flying J over the Pilot, which has a Moe's in it.